Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I've just realized that I've made it about halfway through the video with my mic audio muted, so. Hello. Let's try this again. My name is Boom Yeti, this game is Element Fission, and today I'll be walking you through batch selling and the AI selector that they've just recently added in the 1.7 patch. Hopefully I can provide you with a little bit of uh, clarity on how it works. Um, the main goal here is going to be to help everybody understand how to set things up so you can auto farm. Um, I know that we recently lost access to the skip loot button and that had a lot of people, um, you know, having a hard time being able to farm. So my goal is to show you guys what I've done on my account to make it so that I can auto farm again um, without having to worry about chests and all of that stuff. So if any of that is something that interests you, then by all means, grab a drink, sit back, relax, enjoy. And without any further ado, let's jump straight into gearing and element fission. Man, recording that whole thing, bro. I said so much good stuff, y'all. Oh my god oh my god all right well anyway uh the first thing we want to cover is the initial batch cell settings um to get here all you're gonna do is just come down to the uh inventory button down here at the very bottom of the main page come up to the cog next to the batch cell it brings you here um you should set your one two and three stars all to legendary automatically being sold and check the box for automatically selling flats on 246 um, you just don't want any one, two, or three stars once you can clear B10. Um, and if you're using these settings at this point, you should be clearing B10. Before that, keep everything, level it up, make your B10 team, okay? Um, once you've accomplished that, then come back to this video and, and worry about all this stuff, all right? So we're just going to assume everyone is post B10 and is able to farm Boxer, and that's why you're here. So uh, all of these set to Legendary. For four star, I am personally at a place where I'm setting this to Expert. Um, that means that there's going to be an automatic sale of all four-star gears that are expert, purple, uh, quality, and below. And then I'm going to set exclusions here that that modify that to keep certain purple gears that are four-stars. There are speed rolls and things like that I'm going to keep. We'll get into that in a second. But for my settings and the way that I'm doing this, I am going ahead and I'm setting that to purple. On five, it is set to premium. All blue and below are being sold. In my opinion, if you could clear Boxer B10, you should not keep blue runes. This isn't Summoner's War. It's a far, far easier game to gear in. You should be deleting blue runes for gold because you need that gold to power up the good ones that you get. So don't fall into the trap of keeping any blue runes whatsoever or powering them up for any reason. I don't care if it's 17 speed. It doesn't matter. Sell it. It's blue. <laughs> move on to a better gear and set a standard for your account so that you don't worry about that deeper later into the game. Um, you've put tons of resources into blue gear, right? So anyway, set this to sell the blues. I, again, same exact mentality. I personally do not power up two, four, six flats whatsoever. I don't care if they're brilliant with six speed. Um, the, the gearing in this game is so much easier than other gotchas because of the luck system that you are able to synergize your gear much better. You're doing yourself a disservice by powering up flat gears and not just selling them for their resources. Um, it might look pretty in the moment. It might be nice for this week's arena rush, but eventually that booster having 30 speed in that slot, it could be a good rune that's 30 speed in that slot because they're much easier to come by now. So anyway, rant over, do what you want. I personally sell all uh, 246 flats. All right, so moving on to exclusive settings, and here comes my caveat for this section. These are my settings. This is not necessarily the best. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I'm just simply going to share how I have done it that's been very effective for me when I want to be able to just AFK farm, um, not worry about chests, not worry about the loot that I'm receiving, just, you know, full on let my, my game farm for me. Uh, this is how I've been doing it. So the first thing that I've set for an exclusion is all five-star gears that are on slot two, four, six, if they are purple or above, um, and if they are not flat, are going to be kept. So I want to automatically not even think about it. If it's two, four, six, and it's a good rune that could be useful, it's coming into my inventory, and I'm going to vet it later, gear, or power it up, destroy it if it's got bad subs, yada, yada, right? Not going to worry about it, just going to keep it. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is going to be my first four-star caveat. Um, so that's going to be any four-star uh, gear that is purple or above on slots one, three, or five and has four speed. So if it rolled with speed, it's on one, three, or five, four-star, purple or above, it's going to be kept, and I'm going to personally roll that gear up. Um, 
if it is four star legendary on slots four and six and has a percentage that i'm okay with keeping and wanting to roll so if you look here you'll see that i am not including crit damage i'm not including crit rate um, I'm only including the things that I'd be okay with having as a four-star main stat, right? Um, and if it has four speed, I'm also going to hold on to those. So remember, our settings from here is automatic. They're automatically selling all purples, and so our exclusions here are are making sure that I'm keeping, you know, uh, the purples that I I want to have. Um, this one is only legendary because I don't want purples on slot four and six. I don't need triples for the most part um, in this situation for these runes. So I'm, I'm not going to keep those. I'm only going to keep legendaries. Um, there's next one is a blank spot. And then we move on to specifically four star slot twos um, for four star slot two. If it's legendary, um, if it's HP attack or defense, and if it has five or more speed, I want to keep that to roll it. Um, I could be pretty picky, so you might not need to be this picky. This might be this might be um, purple and above for for this slot, and it might be four. It might be minimum speed, right? Um, you just tailor this to your own account and what you want to keep versus what you don't want to keep. I personally never want to keep a four star speed rune or a four star luck rune, so those aren't in this list. They're excluded. I want to delete those. All right, cool. Slot four has its own separate exclusion. Yet again, it's all slots. It's purple and legendary, slot four, and the three things I'm willing to have as a main stat to check speed rolls on, right? And again, this one is if it's legendary or expert. See how slot four, I'm willing to take purples because on slot four, I'm willing to be a little bit more lenient in what I want to keep and what I want to roll, right? And so I choose the main stats that I want, and then I say I want it five or more speed. Four just makes me feel bad because it'll min roll, and then it's eight, and then I hate everything, right? So because I'm allowing expert, I want it to be five or higher, okay? And then on slot six, I'm doing a very similar thing. Yet again, it's four star, all runes, legendary and expert, the main stats that I'm willing to accept, and then five or higher speed. Again, I don't like four speed on a purple rune, and so I'm just setting that one higher. Your preference there. All right, and then my last couple of exclusions are set specific for while I'm farming Boxer. Um, typically, 8, 9, and 10, I'll just swap out as I'm doing different things. Um, the previous ones can be kind of universal, but these ones are just for Boxer. Um, so it's going to be four-star gears uh, on either Power, Revenge, or Fatal um, if they have two of three of these stats. So speed, crit damage, and crit rate. If they have two out of three, I want to keep those to roll them um, to try to, um, you know, triple and quad roll into crit damage and stuff like that. Um, and then my other one is going to be Inspire Runes. Um, again, four star, expert, and higher. Uh, if they have three luck, that way it's, you know, potentials for max luck rolls. Um, I do want to keep those. I have a lot of Inspire Runes, like 400 plus Inspire Runes, I think, something like that in my account. Um, so I don't need a lot, but I can always use more perfect rolls, right? Um, so 12 and 15 luck, respectively. So I, I also keep those and roll those. All right, guys. So moving on from batch selling and into the AI settings, this is going to just, again, be a example of how to do this. I'm personally only really farming Boxer again now. So my settings are specific to Boxer. Um, so that's what we'll cover. But you could take this um, approach that I'm using and apply this to all gears. Okay. So the first thing that I'll say is that you want to have your settings on. And I have uh, my default for all unset types set to volume zero. So if I do go and farm another dungeon, you know, for whatever reason, I'm not accidentally just selling, um, you know, good gears. You know, the AI is not just picking for me. So that's the first thing. And then uh, the very first settings that I'm going to have are specific to Swift and Bash runes. Um, the way that I was, uh, the information that I got from the devs was that a, the very bottom here is a value of zero in the, the big algorithm that is how the AI works. And so anything you put in the very bottom bucket is going to be worth nothing when it picks a rune. So that's why I have flats down here is for that reason. Um, since this is only specific to Swift and Bash, I'd prefer not have luck on this gear. This is primarily PvP gear. And so I'm going to weight luck very low. Um, the same goes for resistance for these two sets. I'm not very 
interested in having resistance on that gear and thus it's weighted a little higher than luck because it at least synergizes with pvp gear um, but it's still not as desirable as any of the percentage stats um, that are in the next bucket up as well as crit and crit damage which you know it's never a bad thing to have you could argue putting crit damage and crit right here you could argue going like this um, I personally am looking for a couple sets that synergize crit and crit damage into Swift and Bash. Um, so I, I have it higher right now. Um, and then finally, I have speed and accuracy at the very top. I think that that's pretty straightforward for Swift and Bash. Um, you know, they're the two most desirable stats. So that's what I want the AI to weigh more than anything else. Now, I have my auto volume for these two sets set to 90% because I do believe that these uh, settings more or less sum up everything that I would pick personally myself um, when doing this. Now, I did do a few hundred runs. Um, I will say that now. I did a few hundred runs with everything set to auto volume zero. In doing that, what I learned from the devs is that the leftmost gear that pops up is the highest point value. It goes from left to right. And so whatever you see on the far left is going to be what the AI would have picked for you if your auto, vo auto volume was high. Um, and so I vetted these settings over several hundred runs, and I would say to a very high percentile, like 95 maybe, um, the AI always picked the gear that I personally would have picked. Um, and so that's why I have the confidence that I have putting the auto volume as high as I have. Now, I don't put it all the way to 100 because in the event that there's a complete tie... I do want to get a chest, but it's so rare that I can I can go hours uh, farming, you know, 40 second runs and not have any chests pop up. Just only have gears pop up with these settings. Um, so this is how the Swift and the Bash settings are going to be for me. Um, you could, again, customize this to your liking if you value something more than others or you just don't value, like if you wanted no luck ever, put luck down here right? And it, it gets zero points whatsoever. I think that it's a little more valuable than these. So that's where it is for me. All right. Um, now next I have inspire. Uh, I don't think I have to break down all of everything here. I think that you could just look at what I have and apply what we've been talking about. Um, same value for flats. I want luck on inspire more than anything else other than speed and accuracy really. So my inspire gear, you know, pure PVE gear. That's why it's set like this. Um, I have a decent amount of Inspire with crit rate and crit damage. I'm not really looking for that. Thus, I've dropped it here. It could be wherever, you know, you need those stats. Again, 90% um, auto volume. Very rare that I need to look at these. It's pretty cut and dry. Um, what I do and don't want for substats on Inspire gear at this point. All right, so Fatal and Power. You'll see that I've, again, done a 90% auto volume because Fatal and Power is also very straightforward on what I do and don't want. Um, it's, there's no middle ground, as you can see, <laughs> literally. Um, I want my attacking stats. I've put defense and HP. There would be an, there'd be an argument to put defense here, maybe, right? And maybe even put speed, like, here. Um, I personally have several sets already of, um, high crit rate, like, triple and quad roll crit rate, crit damage with defense on them. So I don't really need it. And so defense is down here in the good, but not required. Uh, section right um and so yeah that's pretty straightforward we don't really want luck on these i have my um what's his face here i have him already pretty well set up uh, for how i use him he's actually set up right now for a, a speed team i need to regear him to give him more luck but i don't i don't need fatal runes for him so because of that he's really the only one that i would really want luck on fatal um i don't really need it so there we go. Um, luck is down here. I, I don't really care. I'm just looking for better, juicier, you know, damage dealing runes. Um, for revenge, it's a little more complicated, right? Because there's a lot wider range of units and a lot more use cases for revenge. It can be both a PvE or PvP rune or gear, excuse me. Um, it can be fast. It can be slow. It can be tanky. It can be nuky. Like, it, it really is all-purpose gear. Um, and thus you'll see that the only thing I don't value very highly is just luck in the flats. Um, you know, accuracy resistance is right in the middle. Uh, there's a there's a huge argument to put resistance like up here, right? 
because basically all of the tanky bruisers that want revenge, like triple revenge, they all want resistance very, you know, heavily. Um, and then accuracy could also end up like here. But I do have quite a bit of the gear um, that I need in those slots. And so I'm personally just looking for some some nuker revenge gear right now. Um, again, this is this is your personal preference. You change this up however you need it based on your box, your gear, um, and your you know units you're trying to run. So that's how that works. My last one is just a, a reset, unused preset. So that is everything. Um, I, I really don't often farm anything right now except for Boxer. I would recommend that if you're going to pick a dungeon to farm, stick with it for a while and just focus on that dungeon for a week, two weeks, something like that to make meaningful improvement to all the sets for that dungeon. Once you feel like you've made meaningful improvement to all the sets, then you move on to a different dungeon or whatever have you, right? You go and farm all the grinds and, and um, you know, consumables that you need for that set. Um, but for Boxer, this is how I run it. This is what I would recommend. And I hope that this has been helpful. All right, so I just uh, I figure to end the video off, I'll just do proof of concept. Um, I'll do a few 10 runs and then uh, show you guys what I am given for rewards. So here's the first one. Or 20 runs, I guess I should say. Um, I batch sell. That's going to get rid of anything that didn't meet my criteria. And everything else here meets one of the criteria to be kept. Which feels pretty good, right? Pretty cool. It doesn't mean that I'm going to keep every other one of these gears. It just means that every other one of these gears has some potential for me to be able to uh, roll them. So I'll do a few more 20 runs um, and I'll just uh, I'll keep popping back in. Um, maybe we'll montage it or something. We'll see what I do. Um, but I just want to show you guys that having it set up like this, uh, you could very easily just every time it finishes, just like before, you just hit the X for the gear. Don't even power them up or look at them and then hit go again. And that way you can AFK farm. It's the same as uh, skipping loot, you know, when we had skip loot before. But that's going to wrap this one up, guys. Uh, my next video I hope to have out in the next few days is just going to be the process of actually going through gears, powering them up, what I like, what I don't like, what I keep, what I don't keep, etc., etc. Um, I feel like uh, a lot of people are experts at that, but for those that may need that, I will have a video out on that coming up soon. Um, if you guys have made it to this point in the video, I just want to stop for a second and say thank you so much for sitting and listening to me ramble. Um, I can't believe anyone has even made it this far. So anyway, um, thank you guys. Be kind to one another as always. Until next time, take care and so long.